What are you guys up to? Looks like you're in some type of conga line. <laughs> And now you're all dead. Oh well, welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. Uh, this week on Chaos Craft, it's raining TNT. But before I get into that, let me catch you up on some of the other advancements we made this week. This week I spent a lot of time making sure that the multiplayer training worked really well. We had some hiccups, but I made some really clearly defined state machines that run both simultaneously in the client and the server and track that so you can see that ticking and finish report that tells you how many are ticking that means they're processing trying to figure out stuff and the other ones are just finished reporting now you can see a bunch of them finished and they're attempting to report now it's trying to send spawn messages meaning it's going to spawn new orgs and there you go You've got 50 more ticking away and i can ping the server and make sure the server is synced up with it and it is i can accidentally click the wrong button <laughs> But as of the moment, they're going really well. There is still a little bit at the end of a generation that might blow up, but for the most part, they're going great. We also have a species tab that allows me to get information on each individual species in here. And you can see we've got uh, this species got an age of 32, a current score of 1123, a high score of 1129. And uh, no children have spawned so far this generation, none have reported, and it's also got the historical scores there. And if you're completely lost, look at all the other videos on my channel about Chaos Craft, probably the more recent ones, but there's a lot more information on this. I also added a score events on an individual level, so each individual one you can check out their score events. For example, here, I'm about to give it some obsidian which will mess with the simulation, but we're going to restart anyway after this one because I've messed with it a lot, as I will show you in a few minutes. And there you can see he's got item collected obsidian for 450 points and a life extension of three seconds. I also added in a biology debug screen so I can actually look at the 20 different input that it has each one of those is an eye so it casts a straight line out for a certain amount of distance and i can see that the pitch and is 27 and the yaw was 22 there and the distance and this one that i just clicked there is 10 and it can see grass and uh, another entity of its type okay so let's get on to the fun stuff at some point i was concerned that they were not able to place blocks so i gave each one of them a block that i could easily distinguish from the other block to help them along, I also equipped it for them in their hand, and this is what happened. They immediately began to place them like it was no one's business because I forgot to limit how many of them each one had. They also began making it rain TNT by doing a toss item output. As amusing as this was, I now had a problem that I had just completely destroyed the server world and there was TNT everywhere. So I figured how better to get rid of the TNT than to test if they could activate an item. And that item, of course, was flint and steel. Here's what happened. Unfortunately, OBS didn't catch any sound, though. They immediately started lighting fires. And within seconds, the game pretty much glitched out. As one of them just tossing flint and steel like a madman and the TNT begins to catch on fire. On the plus side, they can activate items. So I realize this doesn't really have the AI merit that I would like, but I've got to keep myself entertained while I continue to test and make sure everything works as expected. We still need to test that the crafting system works as it's been ported over. And I've got some ideas on how to speed up learning, but hopefully, just like last Friday, this Friday we'll run another live stream. And I'm hoping to be set up where we can actually run a proper simulation. This is what it all looked like when the game finally settled back down. Just a bunch of guys sitting in a crater starting fires. Once I got all that figured out, I had to restart the world and uh, this morning, after letting it run for a couple of hours, we see several tree blocks placed sideways out there. They must have harvested and then re-added them. You also can see dirt 
being placed in the trees, which is very common considering what we've seen in previous iterations of Chaos Craft. But I have yet to see any crafting tables crafted or sticks or anything like that. So today I'm going to try and dig into crafting and make sure that is all still functioning. Also on the back end, I made it so that each species has its own brain maker config. So basically this the chances that they're going to adjust a neuron in the neural net or set a new weight for a neural dependency or add new neural dependency or any of these things, add a new middle neuron. Those are all completely randomly generated. Uh, additionally, if they're going to breed versus mutate, that's also randomly generated. And the breed rate for interspecies, um, which sounds really weird when I say it out loud, but between two completely randomly generated neural net species, um, all that stuff is randomly generated. The amount of neurons that they start with, the amount of mutations per generation, all those can now change, so we'll actually be able to test on an individual species level which hyperparameters are the best for this. So, for example, in this one, and forgive me, I don't have a user interface made for this yet because I just wrote the back end for it, but each species, we've got a list of our species here, and this one's the aardvark species that I've been training. If we look over here under the hood, you can see the mutation rate data that they've got an 81% chance. I guess this, this isn't actually percentages uh, at this point. It was out of 100 when I did it by hand. But if you total all these up together, it's got 81 out of over whatever this total of these are chance of career adjusting the neuron dependent weight. Um, it's only got a 27% chance of adding a new neuron pair and a 6% chance of setting the weight instead of just adjusting it. You know, you can see that the breed, that it's got a bigger chance of breeding than it does of mutating, which is something I haven't done before, so we're going to see how that works. And a 68% chance of interspecies. And they start with 72 neurons. So that'll be an interesting species to watch. So we're going to find out uh, what hyperparameters work better. One thing I want to do, because if a species is doing really well, you may not want to be as drastically changing... Um, you know, having seven mutations each time. You might want to only tweak it a little bit to see if they improve. So I want to make it so we can, these numbers change based on how well the species is doing or how close to extinction the species is becoming because they become, they plateaued. So those are things to look at in the future. So that about wraps it up for this episode. I'll be continuing to work on pretty much all this stuff and hopefully have a live stream ready to go Friday. I appreciate all the support I got from you patrons out there, Patreons. Um, and I know some of you guys said you want to support, but you can't afford it right now. Don't worry about it. Just feel free to like, share, subscribe, smash something, blow something up. No, sharing it um, and liking it really helped. You know, for the for the word, the more people interested in this, the more people helping out training, the faster it'll go. The sooner we'll be taken over by crazy Minecraft AIs. Cheers.